Hi, I'm Fred Zeglin with your workbench tip of the month. This month we're going to talk about uh, safe and chamber casting. Now, if you've been a member of GCA for very long, you've probably seen Ken do chamber casting using sulfur. It's pretty much the same process. The, there are some advantages to Cerosafe. Cerosafe is a known product, so if you ship it off to a reamer maker or a die maker, they know what it is and they know how much it shrinks, so they know dimensionally exactly what to expect from it. So it has that advantage. Also, it ships well, so a sulfur casting, while it takes great dimensions, might break down while you're shipping it through the mail. So it has that advantage. Now, Cerosafe comes in a ingot form when you buy it, and you can get it in half pound or full pound ingots. They're usually the same shape, just thicker. Uh, usually it comes with a set of instructions, tells you a little bit about how to use it. It's a low temperature casting metal, so it, it melts between 158 degrees and about 180 or 190 degrees is your working temperature. So it, it's actually fairly cool, um, so it doesn't take a lot of time to work with, and it sets very quickly so that you can pop it out and take your measurement. So I've already got my torch turned on, and what I'm going to do is just melt the material. And it'll take maybe 30 or 40 seconds to get us up to full temperature. Doesn't usually take very long. What I'm using to uh, melt the Ciro safe in is simply a, uh, a little casting ladle that has a pour spout. And I like that because it holds enough material to cast one or two chambers. And with the pour spout, it's really easy for me to get it into the barrel and not have a problem. Um, I did plug the barrel in advance. We just put a cleaning patch in the throat area of the chamber to block it so we don't have to worry about the uh, material passing on through. Obviously, if you tried to pour a, an open barrel, you'd just be pouring hot metal on your foot and that wouldn't be any fun. So this looks like it's ready. So all we have to do is get to the mouth of the chamber and just pour until it's full. You want to pour fairly quickly so that you don't get a lot of wrinkles and casting shunts in the casting. And I, the uh, cast has already hardened. It crystallized real quick and you can tell that it's hard. It only takes about a minute for it to be, well, it's probably, you could pop it out immediately. I like to let it set for about a minute and it seems to release better from the barrel when I do that. Um, one consideration might be you might want to put a little bit of oil in the barrel in the chamber uh, and wipe it dry when you're done and that just helps the uh, helps the zero safe release without sticking at all. It's not critical but it's something you can do to make your own life a little easier. It's not a crisis if you forgot to do it, it'll still work. Um, get my cleaning rod here. Never mind me. Here we go, pop it right out. So, what we have then is a very nice clean chamber cast. Uh, we have the ability to measure the throat. We can get free bore information. If you wanted some information about the rifling, you could push the patch a little further down the bore to get that information. We can get all of the diameter and length uh, measurements off of this chamber from this casting. It's nice and clean. So the point of this is you can identify chambers that are unknown. You know, if a customer brings you a gun that uh, you don't know what caliber it is, you can cast it, take measurements, and do comparisons with books and figure out what caliber it is. Uh, you maybe have a situation where a chamber, you know what it is, but you're not sure of the dimensions. So you can certainly check the dimensions this way. Uh, this is an easy way to make a little extra money. It doesn't take a lot of time. So go out there and, and make a little cash with it. And that's your workbench tip for the month.